Much of the cryptocurrency market took a tumble today, including the most noteworthy of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and that of BNB. After some wild, crazy, speculative rumors are going on regarding Binance, we have an article here from Cointelegraph highlighting more details on this. I will have a link to this article down in the description below. And as usual, I will share my thoughts and my opinions on this at the end of the video. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Everything I'm sharing is my own opinion. It's my own research. I highly encourage you guys to go do your own research. And with that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into the news. Bitcoin dips under 17,000 as craziest rumors over Binance sink Bitcoin price. Bitcoin traders stay wary over Binance FUD, triggering overly bearish Bitcoin price action. Bitcoin fell below $17,000 on December 16th as traders warned of overreaction to FUD involving exchange Binance and others. Binance FUD fuels bearish Bitcoin moves. Data from Cointelegraph, Markets Pro, and TradingView followed Bitcoin USD as it put in multi-day lows of $16,928 on Bitstamp. The pair retraced its entire run to one-month highs courtesy of the latest macroeconomic data and policy update from the United States. Amid ongoing concerns over the solvency of largest global exchange Binance, market sentiment showed what traders argued was a clear case of cold feet. The evidence they suggested simply did not stack up in Bear's favor. The craziest rumors and FUD going around on literally everybody in the crypto exchange business, Michael Van de Pop, founder and CEO of trading firm 8, tweeted on the day. A further post expanded on who those players are. Apparently, the consensus is that Tether, Binance, DCG are all going to fall, potentially even Michael Saylor. Clear, got it. Fellow trader and analyst Crypto Ed sounded equally skeptical, drawing attention to Bitcoin's copycat come down in line with U.S. equities the day prior. Interesting to see everyone suddenly so bearish on Bitcoin as if it's solely acting so weak. SPX is doing exactly the same, maybe even weaker, he told followers, querying whether the Binance FUD really had a role to play. <clears throat> Research Binance Reserves data makes sense. An examination of Binance's previous proof of reserve statement, meanwhile, on-chain analytics platform CryptoQuant likewise found little evidence of foul play. To evaluate the information contained in Binance's proof of reserves report, we compared the liabilities presented by Binance and the report to the on-chain metric data we have at CryptoQuant regarding Binance's Bitcoin reserves, our estimation of the deposits made by Binance's customers. Explained in a blog post on December 15th, <clears throat> We discovered that the liabilities stated by Binance are highly similar to our assessment 99%. It added that the data Binance supplied about its liabilities, quote, makes sense. No amount of reassurance was enough to console Bitcoin price action on the day, however, with $17,000 barely holding at the time of writing. Popular trader Crypto Tony thus announced entry of the next wave down for the bears amid ongoing predictions of a cycle low at $12,000 or under. Bitcoin all as expected if we consolidate for a while above $16,900. I will open a long, still patient for now, fellow trader Elizy wrote in a fresh update. All right, now for my thoughts on this. Today, a lot of options contracts being reported as of expiring, so there was a huge amount of attention focus on that, and consequently, when you have those high volatile base moments of possibility, what do we see? Sometimes actual volatility, right? And in this case, what we're seeing here is with Bitcoin, it's reacting to the market there as well as this drama news regarding Binance. And so we can see that Bitcoin is down about 4% on the day. If we take a look at the market as a whole, we can see that Ethereum, as of the time of me recording this video, down 7%. BNB down over 10%, XRP down 7.78%, Shiba Inu down what looks to be about 7.7%. It's a little hard to read those ones. You get the point. A lot of these are down quite considerably. Dogecoin down almost 10% there as well. And then in addition to this, what we also need to talk about 
is there was some other drama. This is going to be a separate video. I'll have more details on this, highlighting Bitcoin, uh, Binance's proof of reserves being removed from the auditor's site. So that doesn't sound like very good news there either, right? We'll have another video highlighting more details on that. I recommend you guys go check that out. And then in addition to this, what about what happened with FTX? And then you have Kevin O'Leary, who's a very prominent business figure. He has been essentially laying blame over on CZ and on Binance, whereas Binance is having to step up and try and defend themselves and saying that Kevin O'Leary was basically lying. So there's a lot of this back and forth. There's a lot of this speculation. There's a lot of distrust with centralized entities. There's a lot of concern regarding USDT. There's been concern regarding USDT for quite a while now. And whether or not DCG is also going to be collapsing with this because of the fallout of what happened with their exposure with FTX. And then, um, of course, you also have a lot of people starting to pull out their crypto from these exchanges, which by doing so could potentially expose some of these exchanges to not having enough liquidity backing to be able to provide for the proper trades or for even the withdrawals themselves. And if anything is tied into cryptos that they directly made themselves, such as BNB, then there raises a big question there of what's going to happen to the price of those cryptos. <clears throat> and when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you have the Binance smart chain, where you have tons of different projects that are built off of that blockchain, when you also have those projects that rely on BNB as part of their liquidity backing itself, when BNB, when BNB goes down, consequently, what oftentimes do we see? We see the price action of these other projects also go down. So it's just a huge domino effect. What's the flip side to that? BNB price goes up, we largely see the price action of a lot of these other cryptocurrencies also go up. So that's the other side of the coin when you take into account what's going on here. People are being extremely bearish on all this stuff. I mean, this bad news can only go on for so long. This year has been absolutely terrible as it is. Can it go down to $12,000? <clears> theoretically, I mean, theoretically, this could go to zero. Do I think that it's going to go to zero? I don't think so. Michael Saylor, do I think that he's going to have to uh, go belly up because of everything that's been going on? Michael Saylor seems like a very smart guy, and it seems like he's been able to figure out how to leverage the system to not have to sell his cryptocurrencies. He's exposed himself tremendously. That's my biggest concern there, so I don't know if he's going to have to sell off some of that. Another major concern is that, let's just be real, guys. You take a look at Elon Musk and how he's been handling some of these things recently. You have to take into account just straight up facts. The fact is that he has exposure to a substantial amount of Bitcoin. That is a fact. Another fact is that he owns a lot of Tesla stock. Fact. What happened just the other day? He sold once again, not the first time. Again, in a short recent time period, billions of dollars worth of Tesla stock helping to contribute towards Tesla's price going down. And he needs that capital for a variety of different things, right? So what about his exposure to Bitcoin? If he's selling his Tesla stock, do you guys think that there's a possibility, realistically, that he could also be selling part or all of his Bitcoin whether it be out of a form of desperation, out of necessity, out of him trying to balance the books a little bit so that it's not all just coming out of one location. What do you guys think about that? Let us know in the comments down below. And that's what I got for you guys on this video. Again, I'll have another video talking more about Binance's proof of reserves. Feel free to check that out on the channel here. I should have that up within a reasonable amount of time. I try to give a little bit of space between some of these uh, articles that we talk about here. And lastly, I just wanna talk about real quick, is Weeble. Again, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please go do your own research. If you use my referral link, you could get up to 12 free stocks. You can also trade cryptocurrencies on their platform. It's very simple. You open up an account, you get two free fractional shares, you deposit any amount, you receive between four to 10 free fractional shares. These are going to be valued about $3 or $4 in range. They could go up to $300 or $3,000 if you are lucky. And they have other trading tool assets you can play around with on their platform as well. I've been using Weeble now for a couple years. Feel free to check it out if you guys would like. The option is there. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. A double shout out. Thank you to WeLoveSaving.com, Victor Vegas, SafeMoon Oz for being higher level patrons. Also, thank you to my YouTube members for your support. 
If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up like button. God bless, and we will see you in the next episode.